Bonjour and welcome to another week of new comic books being review, reviewed. Uh, I've got to get those new. <laughs> being reviewed by yours truly. You try saying that fast three times. Anyway, I'm going to review the top, what I consider to be the top 10 best comics this week. And it was another, it was another good listen. You're never going to hear me say it's been a bad week. So I don't know why I'll come here every week and say, it's been another great, you know by now, don't you? You know by now I love this stuff. I am going to do the top 10. After that, that's going to be relatively spoiler free. After the scroll, there's going to be a deep dive into my top five. So beware, that's where we're, we're going to have a look at the artwork inside, talk a little bit about why I love them so much. Then I'm going to tell you what my favourite book of the week is. And then after that, I'm going to tell you what my favourite cover of the week is. Just a little bit of fun right at the end of the video. Imagining if we had only enough pocket money for one comic book and we was walking towards that spinner with excitement and apprehension because we can only afford one. Do you remember those days in the drugstore or the news agent? going to the shelf or the spinner rack. I can only afford one. And most often than not, it wouldn't be the same one every month, would it? Sometimes you'd bounce, because you'd get an entire story, or maybe two, depending on what comic you was buying, sometimes you, it would be the cover and that, that would make you look inside and then you'd think, oh, you know, Hulk is fighting Fantastic Four or... The Legion of Superheroes is having an intergalactic battle. Whatever it was. Whatever side of the fence you come from back in those days. Anyway, I digress. That is what all that, that is what the cover of the week is all about. A little bit of fun. It's got to be fun. There's no whinge of the week either this week. And I know there wasn't one last week. It, it's rarely that I do a whinge of the week. I've, it's only when I do feel like I do have to have that little whinge to get it off my chest. But this is all about the good stuff. So let, let's get going. I don't know why I didn't do issue one of this. I think it might have been. I think it might have been because the issue one came in late in the UK. I don't know what it was, but this two issues of this and at $4.99 for 64 pages of comic book. That's well worth it. And we're going to have a look at the wonderful artwork. And you, there is, it's Italians on the writing and the artwork. So I'm going to have to read their names. Okay, there's no way anyway. Incredible Hulk. Yes. Yes, it's in my top five, guys. It's in my top five. I've calmed down. I know I had a little whinge about... What was his name? Danny Earls. I'm going to give Danny Earls a break. Three issues he's worked on on this in the New Orleans story has been nicely creepy, thanks to uh, Philip Kennedy John. Yes, Philip Kennedy Johnson. It's been a, it's been a, a delightfully creepy story set in New Orleans. Danielle's artwork. I think I've just settled into it, to be fair. And yeah, it, it, it's, it's a good read. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit guilty about having whinged about it. But I think it was just so jarring because Nick Klein's work is so fluid and, and gorgeous. And then it goes to Danielle's and they, he's a great, he's, he's, a good, he's a good comic book artist, but it just didn't suit it. Anyway, next one up, Action Comics. Again, DC are delivering on Superman. And this is the beginning of a new story arc. We've got Bizarro out of the way. Now we're on the Brainiac. I don't know if they're going to, I don't know if they're going through the alphabet. <laughs> what would have been A? Let me know in the comments. Uh, a little competition. The first one wins a love heart emoji from me. <laughs> anyway, an an another good read. Consistently good read, Action Comics. Nice art. I won't show it because that'll, that would be way too spoilery, but a great cliffhanger at the end nice just old just that old i was going to say old-fashioned 
but I don't mean that in a in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. That old fashioned story, to, you know, leave leave it and you leave you wanting more at the end of that issue. Really nice. Also really nice. Peach Momoko on this. It, <laughs> it's a wonderful thing to behold. I don't think. I know this is controversial. I don't think that's X Men. I, I don't. I don't. It's not the X Men. <laughs> I know it's set in another you in in an ultimate alternative universe. I love Peach Momoko and I love that comic. Part of me, right? I'm split down the middle here, guys. Half of me understands why they've called it X Men because it's to get people to read it. And I did say about issue one that Marvel are brave, but I am thinking there is an element of cowardice here because Peach Momoko is, is weaving a story of youngsters at a certain age when their mutant powers are coming to the fore. You know, the, the trope that's been there for decades, right? But calling it Ultimate X-Men... I'm just not sure. Not when the New Mutants come out and they just called it the New Mutants or when Mutant X come out. And I know I'm going back in the X-Men lore, but they set those books apart, calling this Ultimate X-Men alongside Ultimate Spider-Man, which is dealing with Peter Parker, and Ultimate Black Panther, which is dealing with T'Challa. To call this Ultimate X-Men and you're not really dealing with your core X-Men, yeah, I did say it was brave of issue one. Issue two, but don't get me wrong, I'm loving the book. I'm just talking about bringing on, being honest and, and, and wanting to bring on new readers. And maybe I need to debate, maybe I need to debate that a bit further with my old mate Joe over at Muscles and, and the Multiverse because he, he's heavily into the, you know, he's heavily into the X-Men cartoon and he... he the boy does like to study, so yeah, maybe I'll get his maybe I'll get his take on that. And by the way, hello Joe. And on that note, hello everyone else over from uh, Threads, my Threads friends. Welcome back if you've been here before. Welcome if you haven't. And if you aren't on Threads but you just watch my videos, and I've said it before. Have a little go. Have a little go at it. If you're not heavily into social media or you've been put off of everything by Twitter uh, or X, formerly Twitter, it's a great bunch of guys and girls over there. That just I, I just love the unabashedly positive approach to comics. I, I love it. I love it. Let's get on with it. And this is Book of the Week, guys. Yep. I don't know if I've made this book of the week before. And I think it might be because we were all apprehensive, were we not, about uh, Darren Warren Johnson letting go of the art duties. He's still writing it. But, oh, my God, we've had six issues of, of, of glorious comics. They have been. And they are spot on fun. They nail it. They nail the franchise. They nail, they also nail a monthly format. So you do, you do get a, a, a bit of a beginning, middle, end. You, you're not really, you, you're not picking up an issue thinking, oh, this just leads to next issue, next issue and, you know, I, I might as well buy the trade paperback after 10, you know, instead of buying 10 issues, like nearly a year's worth. They've kept up the momentum, all of those energy and universe stuff. So that's my book of the week. And, uh, is it Corona? Corona? Yeah, yeah. George, I'm going to just say this and I'm English. I'm going to call him George Corona. Apologies if there is another way. Hodge, George. George Corona. Love your artwork. Apologies if I pronounce your name wrong. There was nothing to worry about. In, in a way, part of me prefers his artwork. But don't tell anyone. We'll keep that between us. <laughs> That's my top five for the deep dive, guys. 
worth worthy of an honourable mention. Phantom Road, I've had I've had my comments on this, haven't I? It really did pick up this issue, and I'm never gonna I'm not gonna ever moan about uh, Jeff Lemire ever. And the artwork by Gabrielle Walter is, is really glor glorious artwork. I want to see his art on more. It does pick up the pace in this issue because it leads towards the end of book two. But I've got to say, after ten issues, what we've done with two books. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Come on. That's not a whinge, by the way. I'm enjoying it, but that's better off in trade paperback. I, I, I wouldn't advise anyone to pick that up other than on a trade paperback. But you will have a gloriously Jeff Lemire fueled ride. Enough said. Three issues in, and I can't believe how much fun this still is for a non Thundercats fan. And what a glorious cover by Daniel Nakama DNA. Daniel Nakam Nakayab. Daniel. David Nakayama. You know what I'm like, come on. Um, what a glorious cover that is. And it envelops a real fun read of a comic. And again, a good monthly read. Something happens each month where you think, oh, yeah, that's good. I'll get that again next month. Napalm Lullaby. I did do the deep dive on this issue one. I've got to mention issue two because it, this one, it, it, it's not as pacey as issue one, but issue one has to be, doesn't it, to drag you in. This one gives us more background on our two main characters. And the and and further characters. I won't get too spoilery actually with that. Well, well worth it. Obviously, Rick Remender and Ben Gal. I don't know what what he's done before. Artwork superb. This again is my, I keep using the F word. Fun. And this is X-Men Distilled. It is a little bit on... It, it, it veers toward the... What's the word I want to use? The family friendly? I was going to say immature, but that, that would do it a disservice. I'm not, it wouldn't be in my top ten if it was an immature read. I'm not saying that. It can, it can be in places if I was going to really, really, really nitpick. But... It's just, it's straight, it's straightforward. And it is, it, it's worth your, I think it's worth your time and money, that book. And obviously, this is a lot more dough, but $6.99, but I, I did do the, I think I've done the deep dive on issue one. This iteration of Batman, if you didn't watch my other video, and if you didn't, why not? Go back and study. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. It, uh, it set in that pre-Second World War era and imagining that Batman is in that time and, you know, blah, blah. Like an, El an Elseworlds. It's Black Label, but it's, all, it's, it's kind of like an Elseworlds. Black Label. It says here, a depression, monster men, rampant crime, all backed by war drums in the distance sums it up nicely and actually on that on that subject on the back is everything you need to know if you was in the comic shop about because I do and I will continue to wage my war against the blank back page but DC someone at DC has seen fit to do this look everything you need to know and you this issue too and you think oh has the comic shop got issue one I'll get both issues because that sounds really interesting. Or you put that one back and get issue one. Whatever it is, instead of doing that. That's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's going to make me want to hunt down issue one. if Because you, you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it by just leafing through, are you? you well, you're not in this issue. You just, you just aren't. So, you know, Phantom Road. Yeah, that's good. I've just picked up issue 10. 
it doesn't come on guys come on anyway I can't resist the whinge can I don't know what it is don't know what it is that's why I'm geeky old hog that's my top 10 guys please join me after the scroll for a deep dive on that top 5 and my book of the week Transformers uh, beware spoilers before I do that thank you my sexy sexy subscribers thank you for that and thank you for everyone who's commenting I, I really love it I, I can answer every every comment until I get to a million subscribers I'll answer every every comment <laughs> let's get into it let me know what you've got or join me on threads whatever it is let's get involved let's talk about let's talk about the best hobby in the world and please join me after the scroll for Deep dive on the top five book and cover of the week. After the scroll. So here we go. This week's top five, guys. Batman Dylan Dog. Dylan Dog, for those who don't know, is a Italian uh, comic character. This guy here. And he is a nightmare investigator, a paranormal investigator. Now, from the cover, so I'm not giving too many spoilers away when I say Dylan Dog Batman is on the title. We all know this is Etrigan. And that's John Constantine. This is a wonderful, wonderful. Look at this, this pure. You couldn't get, and that's Jumping Judas is... Dylan Dog's uh, and up until now, Dylan Dog has only been available in primarily Italian comic book form. He's the second only to uh, Tex in Italy. He's so he's the second most popular comic character in Italy. And six years ago, they did a team up, which is this comic, and. I, I, I love the fact that they've, if, if, if you like the different versions of Batman that, that you're getting at the moment via, uh, what is it, the Dark, is it the Dark Age Batman and uh, the, the, the Batman that I showed um, uh, earlier on, you know, all those different versions that, that different creators do of Batman, this, this is a wonderfully European feel, especially to the artwork. And let's give the guy a shout out. Uh, Gigi Cavanago and Werva Della Edera. Now, I think one of these has been working on um, a book for uh, Boom Studios. I'm sure one of them has worked on, on something recently. Anyway, this has taken six years to, to get translated into English. And this this character is based in London. So the setup is Batman has to come to London and he gets followed. Catwoman's followed him. Something happens to her last issue. They, they're after another villain. And, you know, they both get embroiled in each other's stories. And it's pure, still pure Batman. It's, it's a really good... It's, it's fresh. It really is a fresh take on on Batman and the kind of stories he can get involved in. So it's wild and it is very, very, very left of, let's just say very, very left of centre, that European um, sensibility, that lightness of touch. And what good value this is i mean look and i love i love the fact that these panels and the only other comic that i know at the moment that does it is kaya by image where you don't have any any lines on the panels which gives it it gives it a i don't know it gives it a it helps each i think it just helps each panel seep into it i think it helps the storytelling when there's no frame on the panel i just think especially action set pieces like this you know these artists this is great this is great comic book sequential art and you know that's what i love when when artists can do this 
colouring is great as well. We we obviously you, you can guess what's going on, can't you? By the colour of their hair and why Batman's involved. <laughs> you know, a mixture of a mixture of art and lettering. <laughs> And you, 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 you know, you just know what's going on. This is um, the the sidekick of Dylan Dog. I forget his name now, but Harpo or Mark, Max, where are you? from one of the Marx brothers. Obviously, something's happened to to Catwoman. And this is so half of it. Half of it is your typical. I say no, your your non typical Batman, but half of it is with Batman, Catwoman, and then they introduce this this character who is part of Dylan Dog's past, and then the next half is what Dylan Dog has to do. It's what Dylan Dog has to accomplish, and who does Dylan Dog have to get on his side? <laughs> John Constantine. <laughs> I love it. I loved it. I just thought it's great. And he's still got a bottle in his hand. Uh, you know, he's a paranormal night stroke nightmare investigator. We all know John Con John Constantine. So I'll skip I'll skip ahead a few pages. And and this is 64 pages, by the way. And there's it. Look at that. Still speaking in rhyme, and yes, they do make a joke of it. Um, I thought this was this was fantastic. Two issues, sixty-four pages for four dollars ninety-nine. Obviously, because they're reprinting previously. Uh, you know, they're just translating its previously published material, but they're passing on the saving. Sixty-four pages, well worth it. If you like Batman and you like a different take on it, that's well worth it. Talking of different takes, guys, this different take on the Hulk, 11 issues in, is still bearing fruit. I know I had my, my uh, beautiful cover by Nick Klein. I know I had my reservations on Daniel's on the artwork. And I did say right from the beginning, it's not that he's a bad artist. That's not what I was saying. I, I still don't think that he suits this story completely. But he does deliver, you know, stuff like this. I just don't think he's he's well placed for, for. I still don't. But the reason this is in my top five is because just because I don't like his art style doesn't mean that this can't be your way into the Hulk. This is the third. This is the third part in the in in a three issue story arc. In, in the, uh, set in New Orleans, and it has been a wonderfully creepy. This kind of stuff suits Danny Earl's style more. I love, I loved all this stuff. You know, the, the stuff that's set in the misty, you know, in the misty background, and you know, even, even this kind of stuff. But I'm just not sure about that. I'm still not sure. But like I say, I'm showing. I'm show, I wanted to show you these interiors because, like I say, I couldn't draw no better than this. It, it is very, very basic with your blues and purples and greens. Um, but I'm going to let you decide. It has been wonderfully creepy. I mean, that that's a great splash page for this for this character. And and so and so is this. I mean, de depicting this kind of like under this underworld that the Hulk is having to rescue his friend from. Um, I, I, it's very well. It, it is. It's very well rendered, but uh, yeah. Mm. But like I say, I'll, I will bounce back to it's in my it's in my top five. So I am recommending it. So there you go. Incredible Hulk. Any issue, just 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 jump on Incredible Hulk. It's nothing like what you are thinking. They they've just they basically just dumped him into the horror genre, which in a way is where is where he you know is yeah well does it is it where he belongs? On to more traditional fare. And the guy Joshua Williamson over over at DC on on the action comics. Now we've done we've done uh, Bizarro, 
which is which was a great four, five, six issues. Now we're on to Brainiac. And what I, what I liked about this is, is Lois, look, she's got a day off. <laughs> and they're doing this, they've done this a couple of times recently in, in DC. You know, starting off on a casual, you know, that today is my day. <laughs> starting off on a really, really casual setting. But you know all the way along, as I was turning these pages, I literally knew, and they're doing all this and introducing every single character by highlighting them, I thought, there's got to be something. That, that's a glorious double page, by the way. Does that not sum up Superman? That's some glorious artwork right there. Beautiful stuff and beautiful colouring. Is it right at the end, all the names? I, I was hoping... I was hoping that all the names were going to come up so we could give them all a shout out. But anyway, the whole team, here we go. Look, Joshua, uh, uh, Rafa Sandoval on the artwork and Alejandro Sanchez. I think I've given them a shout out before. Even, and it would have made even. And Dave Sharp on the lettering combine to make a wonderful, a beautiful setting for the attack. And look who is in the attack. Yeah, the Zarnians. So we gonna we, we know who's gonna appear in next issue, don't we? <laughs> Love the way the, the Zarnians are depicted. Superman is just being Superman. The, the entire rest of the family are in it. I know it's, they just call it the family now. I, I think it's a bit of an eyebrow raiser, but it's the modern iteration, so We'll go. We'll go. We'll go with it. Wonderful artwork. Lex Luthor is he involved? Everyone keeps asking him, and he keeps saying, "Why does everyone keep asking me if I'm involved?" <laughs> and they're robbing. Brainiac's basically robbing the members of everyone's family, including Lex Luthor. And I won't go any more because there is a wonderful, wonderful last page cliffhanger in that. So, again. I really recommend guys and girls well it's got x-men on the cover are there any inside there are definitely mutants that's one thing i will say and what do we expect from peach Ramoko? this is what we expect issue one was delightful in its madness and so is issue two and this is this is all glorious stuff you, you know about uh, a girl of a certain age with her blossoming powers. It's it yeah, it's pure peach Momoko. And I'm I'm really I'm loving it. I've I know they've set it off on the side. Look at this. I know they've set it off on the side. So this isn't X-Men. And if you expected X-Men, then go and buy the X-Men comic, which I don't know how you do that anymore. But because there's about 18 of them. But this isn't, this was still wonderful second issue. Beautiful, Be beautifully painted in her style. If you don't like her style, then there's no way, there's no way in for you. You know, st stuff like this is just, just pure cartoon. It's, it's not even, ma well, I don't know if it's a mashup of manga and, and just uh, traditional, watercolour painting I, I don't know what it is but you know just a line of pink across there just to you know let you know it's the face in the picture in the frame um i'm i'm loving it and i'm loving this new x man <laughs> but uh it's got nothing to do with it's got nothing to do with x men but it's a, it is a great story and i like the way they they had these cuddly toys introduced in a page further back uh, further uh, further forward should i say sorry um yeah and how the story ends up and this guy's back or this creature is back from the first issue it's wonderfully creepy stuff as well when it needs to be her artwork you know she can she's got a definite turn of of style 
that can give you the creepy, you know, the worms and maggots of, of it all. Um, it's, it's great. I mean, I, I'm just a big fan of Peach Momoko, so it's not, please believe me when I say I'm not, I'm not down on this comic. And I did call issue one Brave because, yeah, it's not X-Men. <laughs> it's not X-Men, but it's a beautiful comic. It's, a, it's, it's just a good fun read. It's an easy read. It's a light read. Um, you know, le less words. I mean, le there's something to be said for telling the story. You know, if, even if you took through, uh, took out those, you know, it's, it's sparsely worded. But even if you took those out, you can still follow the story. And that's something that I really love. So, yeah, thoroughly enjoying it. You know, it's armour. That's what she showed in the first issue. And she's smashing the eggs that she got for her mum shopping. Look, she's broken them. <laughs> it's just a nice quirky, you know, the eggs for my mum. Look, <laughs> uh, with everything going on and she's worried about the eggs. You know, it's nice. It's nice. A, a good read. I think that will do. However long she stays on it, I'll be with this book. But what are they going to do afterwards the, with the characters they've set? Without Peach Momoko, I don't think it's much of a book. It's, there's big shoes to fill when she when she is done playing around with those characters and talking about big shoes to fill playing around with the characters Daniel Warren Johnson has stepped back from Art Juniors on this book and if the comments on threads were anything to go by everyone was going Whoa, you know oh my god because he, he'd done such a stand up job with it on the first six, six issues. But with this issue seven, the first turn of the first page, wow, you realize you're in safe hands. We're back on Cybertron for the start of the new story arc. And wow, yeah, this just zapped along. Darren Warren Johnson is obviously setting the, the storyline, but look at this glorious stuff. In a way, there's something about uh, George Corona's work, uh, artwork that I prefer. I think it's cleaner. N nothing against Darren, Darren Warren Johnson, don't, don't get me wrong. But look at this stuff, guys. There is nothing wrong with that. So I'm so glad. That's why it's my book of the week. You know, if you haven't got the previous six issues and you want to get the trade paper back and you want to jump straight into Transformers comic books get this issue because you you, you can jump straight in with that <laughs> look at this stuff i love it <laughs> there's some good noises here chonk and chom and slam and schwa i mean what's a schwa <laughs> i'm a big fan of sound effects i love a thwomp <laughs> I'm making light of it, but this is a really good read. Top-notch artwork. The whole entire Energon universe that they're they're creating, I think, is 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 top of the shot. Soundwave here. You know, there's a bit of a tete-a-tete -tete between Soundwave and one of the other Decepticons. Um, yeah, that's great. It's it's great stuff, guys. And that is my book of the week. As far as cover of the week goes, um, I don't think Transformers. I don't think Transformers is doing it without one image. So we're going to take that away. Definitely, Daniel Nakayama. I know I've got that wrong, but DNA. That cover of a. I always want to call her Cheeto, <laughs> but that is a brand of crisps, isn't it? Of, of savoury treats so but with Chitara in skin tight shiny yellow yeah that's a great that's a great cover Wolverine and Sabretooth is always going to make for a, a, a beautiful cover Superman with his with his with his eyes glowing backed up with all of this going on. I thought that was quite quite an epic cover. That's not your traditional Incredible Hulk cover, but 
what's going on? Why, why is there an, a, a, a disc of ice floating above her head? I don't know. I thought that Batman cover was great, but that is the inner, that is the comic, that is the old comic book geek in me. But I don't think in and of itself, that is the most exciting, um, exciting cover. Not like Vader with his lightsaber, but is it too traditional? It's only going to appeal to the Star Wars fans a bit like that. But my God, tight throng, tie fighters, Vader. And, you know, come on, we all know what's going on. And first night, another, another beautiful cover. If, if that is not an, if that isn't an intriguing cover for Batman, then I don't know what is. You know what era it's set in. Maybe a little bit early with the Tommy guns. That probably sets it in the twenties or thirties, to be fair. But nevertheless, that's got it all. That's got every trope of that era between the twenties and the late thirties. It's got every trope. Commissioner Gordon having a fag. What the? What the? <gasps> you know, the old noir, femme fatale draped over the chaise lounge. <laughs> And Batman looming over it all. Love it. But what's the cover of the week? It's my pocket money. Batman would lure me in. You've got to be you've got to be proper Star Wars specific with those, but I thought I'd show them because they're great covers. Incredible Hulk, alright, he's hulking out, but it's mm, yeah, I don't know. A bit static. Batman, Dylan Dog. Thundercats is definitely in there. So so is Superman. But do you know do you know what? Just for old these two old school, proper old school, and just for the old school fun of it, and the old school on the nose, unashamedly, both of these are. I think I've got to go for X Men guys, and I know that might be. If you've followed my videos for any length of time, that might be a bit of a shocking revelation. But, nah, that's got to be cover of the week. Come on. Wolverine, Sabretooth. And then when you go inside, you realise, yeah, there's Wolverine, Sabretooth. And it's all kicking off. So, that's my cover of the week, guys. Thank you if you stayed with me this far. And, until, and I hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know what you got this week. What you've enjoyed, if you picked up any of those like me, uh, is, are there any that you didn't enjoy? Please let me know in the comments. Give me a like if you want. Give me a subscribe if you want to be super sexy. And until next week, I will bid you adios. Mm -hmm.